guys, my name is Kelsey. And my name is Becky. And we are the Sorry Girls. And we are bringing you even more wedding DIYs. Another Just can't one. stop us. And another one. <laughs> this one involves a little bit more construction, but trust us, it's super easy. It looks like you spent a fortune on it. Yeah, but you did it. You made it yourself. Exactly. We're making a DIY wedding arch that you can put whatever you want on it. Flowers, maybe that flower table runner that you made in oh. our other episode. Oh, maybe that. Also, this doesn't have to be for a wedding. This could be like a really nice photo backdrop. Mm -hmm. This could be like just like party, whatever. And you could like totally decorate it so it's not super like feminine, whatever you wanna do. Exactly. All right, let's see how we did it. Before we jump into this tutorial, we would love it if you guys could subscribe. Okay, now we can get started. <laughs> Alrighty, to make our own arch, we picked up a total of three pieces of two by four by 12 foot pieces of pressure treated wood and one two by four by eight foot piece. We got the 12 foot pieces cut to seven feet at the hardware store, so that left us with three seven foot pieces and three five foot pieces. We also grabbed some wood screws that were two and a half inches long. Okay, we're gonna start on the ground using our three seven foot pieces and we're roughing in the shape of the arc. The piece at the top of the arc, we measured one foot in from each side. We lined up the piece that goes vertical to the outside of that one foot line. Next, we took our wood screw and added two screws diagonally from each other to secure the vertical piece to the top horizontal piece. Repeat this on the other side, and now it's attached. Next, we're taking one of our five foot pieces and figuring out how we want our brace pieces to sit. So we figured out we want the piece 26 inches and we'll need to cut the piece of wood on a 45 degree angle on either side. The easiest way to cut on a 45 degree angle is to use a miter box. It's a plastic box that has slits at 90 degree angles and 45 degree angles, so that sawing is super simple. Now that we have a 45 degree angle cut, we want to create another one going the opposite way and we want the length to be 26 inches point to point. So we actually want to do this six times total, so that means that you'll get two of these angled pieces out of each five foot piece of wood. To make things move quickly, we ended up using a miter box to draw out our 45 degree angle, but then use a circular saw to cut it. But if you don't have a circular saw, you can definitely use the miter box and a hand saw. It just might take a little bit longer. All right, so you have six 26 inch brace pieces that are cut to 45 degree angles on either side. And we're going to head back up to our arc and flip it over so that the back side is facing up. In one of the corners, we added the extra eight foot piece of wood just as a flat surface. And then we lined up the corner piece with the vertical piece and then laid it on top of the horizontal piece. We added two screws to the top cross piece, easy peasy, but to attach the side, you're going to need to come in from the side. To make this easier, we pre-drilled a hole that's smaller than our screw on an angle. This makes adding the screw on an angle way easier than if you're doing it without a pre-drilled hole. Repeat this on the other side and now we have a well-supported arc. So the next step is to cut our eight foot two by four in half so that we have two four foot pieces. This is going to go under our vertical side pieces to create bottom support braces. We marked the halfway point on our four foot piece, so two feet, so we know where the side piece should sit. Now this is how we're going to use the four of our 26 inch angled pieces. Using a square to make sure that the corner is exactly 90 degrees, we added in our 45 degree angle piece until it's flat against the bottom piece and the side piece. We then use the same angled holes technique we used on the top to be able to get that screw in there on an angle. We attach the angle pieces with two screws into the bottom piece and two screws going into the side piece. We repeat this towards the back of the arch, then go ahead and repeat that whole process on the other side of the arch. In the end, you'll have a pretty sturdy arc that'll stand up by itself, but if you're concerned of any wind or anything, you can sand bank the arc or you can drill holes and add stakes through the bottom braces. Our final step is to decorate our arch. So you can do this in any way you see fit, but we decided to use a staple gun to staple long pieces of white fabric to the top and let it flow down the front. This is actually leftover fabric from the panels that I made for my bedroom in the loft, if you guys remember that Loft Vibes episode. For the other half of the arch, we decided to add a gorgeous garland of greens, and if you guys didn't catch last week's video, we showed you how to make this as a centerpiece, and we styled it with table decor. Well, spoiler alert, this centerpiece has more than one use. You can use wire or a staple gun to add the greenery to your arch. Look at how gorgeous the final product is. It's so beautiful. It's 5 a.m. and in an hour I'm gonna leave ya, babe. And the sparrows are singing on the garden shed. Seems nothing's understood in this life, but the, the time it takes on. All right, thank you so much for checking out this video. I hope you guys liked it. Oh my gosh, I can't believe how it turned out. I'm really like 
proud of these DIYs getting accomplished. I hope you guys are too mm -hmm. and that you're like trying them out. If you guys are loving this, we have a bunch of other wedding inspired stuff or just any DIYs in general that you need, check out our channel. Make sure you subscribe. Yeah, if you like this video, make sure that you liked it. And if you did love it, make sure you sub it. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Shadows on the sea, I got a record in my brain that was broken long ago. It's been skipping my whole life and now the needle's going free. But the writing's on the wall, I got a devil in my soul that I need to excise.